All right, it's time for some more dagger of Amun Ra. Uh, let's see. When we last left, we met Lorbo. She came to New York. She got robbed twice within twenty seconds of arriving. I walked her in the middle of the street because she doesn't know how to cross the street. She got hit and died. Took a taxi everywhere and figured out. Got to the speakeasy. Some really terrible lady threw out my clothes after I changed and now we're at the museum that got the dagger stolen so this is where it'll start to pick up the first act is more of an introduction to her the second act which we are in now is more of a here's the rogues gallery type of thing and then of course something is going to happen which will lead into act three but I'm not going to get ahead of myself here. Let's jump in. Turn the volume back up. All right. Oh, it's a colonel. This affair is by invitation only, Fraulein. Your papers, please. Oh, God. It's the guy from Indiana Jones. Danke, Fräulein. I'll return this pass when you're leaving. Enjoy yourself this evening. Oh, look, there's a clock. 7 p.m. <laughs> hey, is that the guy from the speakeasy? Heard any good rumors lately? Maybe, or maybe not. What's it worth to you? Well, I don't have any money right now. Then I ain't got no rumors for you, Tuts. You know what I just noticed is that her hair in this game, she's a redhead. But if you look on the box, she's a brunette. Who's this guy? This is quite a party. Does the museum always have a big fundraiser when they open a new exhibit, Dr. Carter? No, but they've never had such an important exhibit opening here before. And I'm an important curator with an important salary, so the museum wouldn't have been able to keep me employed here without financial assistance. You must be very important for the museum to go to so much trouble. Naturally. The museum is lucky that I accepted Naturally. this position as the head of their new Egyptian antiquities department. Why, my name alone will attract more visitors and more money to the museum. Any chance that the Tut Uncommon exhibit will make a stop here on its American tour? No. I'd hate to embarrass my relative by putting his Tutankhamun artifacts on display here. They pale by comparison to my own great discoveries, such as the Dagger of Amun-Ra. Of course. How silly of me to think otherwise. This guy is the yes, biggest that douchebag. was rather silly of you. Oh, you're gonna get killed. Somebody hates you enough to kill you. Bonjour, Miss Bo. God, Dr. Carrington what? told me you were covering this party for the newspaper. I'm Yvette Delacroix. That's right, Miss Delacroix. I'm writing the social news column. Ah, the social news. I was thinking you were here about the burglary. The burglary? <laughs> oh, of course not. The newspaper would never assign a female cub reporter like myself to such an important story. Ah, uh, you are probably being correct. She looks boy. so different than everybody else. Like, it doesn't match. That art is completely different. Also, Good she's evening, hideous. sir. My name is Laura Bow. I am Ramses Najia, Miss Bow. Pleased to make your acquaintance. Nerd. Good evening, Dr. Carrington. Good evening, Miss Bow. Good evening. Alright, let's start asking some questions here. Like, 
What about the burglary, Mr. Douchebag? You must be very upset about the burglary. Quite so. If I ever find out who stole my dagger of Amun Ra, they won't live to regret it, I can assure you. Oh my. Do you have any idea who would do such a thing? I have my suspicions, but I need more proof before I subject him to the full force of my wrath. Have the police learned anything? Those incompetents. Hardly. They couldn't even find any clues around the dagger display. Sounds like the burglar might have been a professional. Perhaps. It's more likely the local constable couldn't find a clue if it jumped up and bit him on the bum. Alright. Let's ask this guy about the burglary. I don't think the girl in the middle knows anything. What do you make of the theft of the dagger, Dr. Carrington? It's simply beastly. What is the world coming to when crepuscular ruffians can invade a museum like Visigoths? What? Do you have any idea who could have done such a thing? Not at all. But if I did, I'd be tempted to teach the brute a lesson. That guy is like a walking thesaurus. Alright, what do you think of the burglary? Mr. Najia, would you have any idea who might have stolen the dagger of Amon Ra? No, but whoever did would be boiled alive. He should be fed to hungry crocodiles. His guts would be strung from the pyramids. He should... Oh, excuse me. I get a little passionate on the subject. Quite all right, Mr. Najia. No, it isn't. I understand. If that guy's not a killer, then I'm freaking... There's no way. That guy has to be guilty of something. Uh, I should reiterate, I'm trying to do this with as little walkthrough as possible. Um, I'd get stuck yesterday once or twice, but for the most part that was all blind. I'm still pretty blind here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Uh, Alright, let's ask the hideous looking lady about the burglary. It is terrible to think someone could break into this museum and steal something so valuable. Monsieur Heimlich, he is all broken up about it, although he doesn't show it. How did Dr. Carrington react to the burglary? Dr. Carrington is a very dignified man. There is not much you can learn from his face. He seems to have taken the burglary very well, although he was angry with Wolf about the poor security. Do you have any idea who might have stolen the dagger? There are many suspicious people here tonight who could have done it. The Countess, for example, or the little man, Ziggy. But I have not the proof, you understand? Let's see if I can take a glass of whatever. You pick it up and place it in your... That was from memory. I remember picking that up before. Well, I don't know. We've talked to that group of losers. Let's go see if there's another group of losers. Go. Jeez. Oh, God, there are so many people here. You must be Dr. Patar Shep Tut Smith. Nice gold onk you're wearing. This is quite a party, isn't it? I find it distasteful to celebrate thievery in the name of science. The artifacts in this museum's Egyptian collection do not belong here. They belong in Egypt. That's only your opinion. It is the truth. And the thieves who rob Egypt of its ancient treasures will find death waiting for them. Amon Ra will have his revenge. I see. Well, hmm. Nice weather we're having. Ugh. Don't, don't do that. Cat, move out of the way. Alright, well, that's two people so far that have threatened harm on some nobody in particular, but still. Great, so this is getting 
Ridiculous. Good evening, Dr. Maklos. Oh, good evening, Miss Ball. Oh. Who are you? How are you, Detective O'Reilly? Oh, not that douche. Just fine, Lassie. You're looking lovely this evening. Good evening. I'm Laura Bow. Oh, God. The snobbish high society. All right, so I'm betting none of these other people are talk people I can talk to. All right, did you steal it? You seem to have a motive. Have you heard anything about the burglary? No. Do you have any <laughs> idea who would want to steal the dagger of Amon Ra? It has already been stolen once from Egypt. Oh God. I can see I won't get anywhere with you on this topic. Yeah, let's never talk to him again. Alright. What you lady? Dr. Miklos, do you have any idea who would want to steal the dagger of Amon Ra? Ha! <laughs> Very funny. Everybody, silly girl. It's a priceless artifact. Not only that, but it is said that the blade is an unknown alloy that can slice through bone like butter. Hmm. Oh, God. Um, I suppose that was a silly question after all. Let me rephrase that. No. Do you know of anyone with any particular motive? Well, Todd Smith and Ramesses Najir both wanted it very badly to return it to their homeland. But they are both so upset, it hardly seems possible that they could have done it. Then again, perhaps they are just fine actors. <laughs> oh God. Ugh, I don't want to talk to any of these people. I'll ask you, douchebag policeman, but I seriously doubt you're going to give me an answer. If you ask me, Missy, they're blowing the whole thing out of proportion. Bigora, you'd think that something important had been stolen. Yes, I was you waiting for him to say Bigora. You don't consider a Egyptian artifact to be important? Listen, girly, if I chased down every petty theft that occurred within the nastier segments of the population, I'd be working 30 hours a day. I would hardly call the Lion Decker Museum a nasty segment of the population, Mr. O'Reilly. And if you're referring to our Egyptian visitors, shame on you. And don't call me girly. By me father's whiskers, you're a fiery one, Miss Laura. All right, I won't call you girly, little lassie. God, that guy's the worst. Alright. Let's go see if we can meet some more people here. Go. Ugh, I, come on. You guys could have made her move faster than this. Holy crap, that's slow. It's not one of those games where you can double click and just zoom over either. Dang. Holy pink! Hi, I'm Laura Bow, and I'm covering this event for the Tribune Society News column. Good evening, Miss Bow. I'm the Countess Lavinia Waldorf Carlton. Please be sure to spell my name right in your Ugh. story. Okay, that's basically Mrs. Peacock from the Clue movie. Hi! You're having such a good time. The fanatic. Yeah, I didn't think so. Alright. Let's see what's in here. Oh, I'm guessing it's the gift shop. <laughs> see if there's any gifts for me to pick up. What do we got here? This doesn't look like a gift shop. It's the cash register. Uh, this is the counter where the counter counts the money. Well, it must be something if she's walking over to it when I hit look. It looks just like the Dagger of Amon-Ra. 
Isn't it beautiful? Oh, they must have a bunch of replicas in there. What's this thing? I kind of stand. These off. vessels appear to be replicas of seventh century. All right. I don't see anything worthwhile here. Let's leave. Oh god, it's so slow. Well, even though she walks as slow as humanly possible, let's go check out the rest of the museum. Oh wait, let's ask this uh, Miss Peacock what she thinks of the, mer the theft. What do you make of the theft of the dagger of Amon Ra, Countess? Oh, it's horrid. Simply horrid. What sort of creature would make off with a priceless work of art, I wonder? Do you have any ideas about who it might have been? Oh my, no! I try not to associate with the dreadful people, dear girl. Oh, whatever. Alright. Oh, these two people change. They actually change. That's weird. Although they look like they're dancing or something. What the hell? Let's see what the rest of the museum looks like. Dinosaur. Back to the rotunda, Fräulein. The rest of the museum is off limits, and you are spooking their mastodons. Oh, mastodons. Sorry. Wait, how are you guarding in there when you're guarding outside too? I'm guessing you guys aren't anybody. Ha! Nope. Being. Okay. Well. We've pretty much met everybody. Question is, what now? Alright, let's at least look up a starting point for this here. Dang cat here. Let's see, where's that link? Blah, 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 blah. There we go. Holy crap, she's still walking. Act one's done. Where's Act two? Eavesdrop on conversations. How the hell do I do that? Do I just walk over to him. I probably has to actually be somebody. Alright, let's walk over to these guys, see what they're talking about, maybe. How the hell do I do that? I guess it's random if anything happens. Or it might you have to might have to do it in order, I don't know. Well, I don't hear anything happening, so let's move on. This must be one of those things that just happens randomly and then you're like, oh I'm supposed to do that, okay. It's not like she has an ear icon. Nope. Uh, nobody there's talking. Okay.
right, I don't know. I'm gonna look up a better walkthrough. Being bad. Say hi. I'm a bad cat. Da -da 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 -da. Give the guy at the front door your pass. Take a drinking glass, which I did. Go to the museum gift shop inside with your own souvenir daggers and magnifying glass. Oh, that's why I can't eavesdrop yet. I'm supposed to do that first. Okay. So something must be up with those fake daggers. I'm supposed to examine them with a magnifying glass. Yeah, the voice acting. Everybody has an accent. A very exaggerated accent. Alright. Magnifying glass. Upon close inspection. All right, let's see here. Made in Pittsburgh? Ha! Huh. That's actually where I live. Oh my the god. The dagger should. Move it. No, you're being bad. Ah, oh, quit attacking the microphone. Jeez, man, cat. All right. Made in Pittsburgh. Made in Pittsburgh. Made in Pittsburgh. Made in Pittsburgh. Yeah, this is fun. I can't. You're staying in the way. There we go. The dagger shows Pittsburgh's high degree of craftsmanship. What? No. Not in this city. Oh, this is fun. Obviously, one of these has to be the real dagger. That's not the s- Upon- 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 Well, move! Jeez! Oh! The dagger shows a high degree of craftsmanship. The dagger shows a high degree of craftsmanship. Yeah, that's because that's the real dagger. There's no made in Pittsburgh on there. Oh, 7.30! Oh, crap, it's the Nazi. Fräulein, this gift shop is closed. You should not be here. Oh, I'm sorry. The door was unlocked. Did they really have to make him walk unlocked? like that, too? My assistant will be disciplined harshly for this mistake. Please rejoin the party now. Or I will be forced to injure you. What? Really? Jeez. Holy crap, I just wandered into an open gift shop. I didn't do anything except find the actual stolen dagger. Alright, now we're supposed to eavesdrop. Let's see how that works. Well, I can't eavesdrop on you unless you're talking to yourself. So let's go over here. I guess I just walk over to him. Let's see. Somebody say something. Maybe if I go behind the table. This snappily. 
There I was, standing on the really? hillside above the excavation in the Valley of the Kings, with the faithful Mahmud describing the dance of the Seven Veils to me she in great detail, like when a shout arose up from the workers below us. Sensing an important discovery at hand, since I have a sixth sense about these things, I scurried downhill to see that a step had been uncovered in the sand. It turned out to be the entrance to the Temple of Amun-Ra. I took the trowel from the Boscafir and cleared the sand away from the rest of the steps myself, revealing the entrance to the temple. The seal of the necropolis was intact on the door seal, indicating that the temple had not been disturbed. I knew that fate had brought me to the discovery I had been seeking for so long. Tireless after my exertion in clearing the staircase, I used a sledgehammer to break through the sealed doorway. Within lay the greatest accomplishment of my considerable career. Hidden within the darkness, untouched for thousands of years in the isolated temple, lay the magnificent dagger of Amun Ra, the greatest discovery of modern archaeology. Good show! Magnifique! Very impressive, Dr. Carter! So, that's when you heisted it, right? <laughs> no, I didn't heist it, you annoying little man. How did he get I invited? took it out of the temple and showed it to the workers, who immediately fell upon their faces, all 350 of them, to show respect for my accomplishment. That's hard to believe, Dr. Carter. Egyptian workers have proudly worked the archaeological digs for many years. I would not think they'd exaggerate their respect for you to such an extent. But then, you weren't there, were you, Mr. Najir? Well, no, that guy that's needs to true. never talk again. Stop talking. And when was the last time you were in Egypt, Mr. Najir? You seem to have lost some of your accent. Well, it has been several years. I thought as much. Your discovery really was quite a remarkable achievement, Dr. Carter. Was remarkable, Dr. Carrington? You mean, <coughs> it is a remarkable achievement. There has never been anything like it before. Quite so. Correction noted, Doctor. If you will all be excusing me, I see a man I need to speak to. Okay. Certainly, Miss Delacroix. Certainly. Okay. I'll walk back and forth here a second, see if I can say anything else. Nope. Oh, boy! Daddy Bet! She's some dish, ain't she? <laughs> oh. Yes, those French women think. I don't think my wife would ever have done it in a mummy case. What? In my vast experience of women from different lands, I tend to agree with you, Mr. Niger. I balked when a certain French woman suggested we have a deep conversation on the back of a dinosaur, but I was pleasantly surprised by the results. Yes, Miss Delacroix is certainly the cat's pajamas, as the Americans would say. Yeah! We does come up with some good sayings, don't we? Quite. Good lord, I hadn't realized a woman was present. Please excuse us, Miss Bow. Oh, I wasn't actually listening to you, gentlemen, Dr. Carrington. I, I always put my hand up to my ear. Stand in here. Excuse me. Weird. Alright, I'll give him another second here. Alright, moving on. Let's go see who else we can listen to. According to the walkthrough, there's uh, 17 of these. Oh, she went to talk to the police chief.
Ryan, I am having the hardest of times keeping my hands off you. Oh god. Not here, Yvette. There's too many people. They are not important. You are the most powerful man here, my Ryan. What about that Carrington guy? He's president of this museum. The doctor, he is old and weak. You are the young one, and strong. And what would you be wanting, Miss Bow? Oh, well, I thought I heard you call my name. You must have been hearing things. I didn't even mention your name. Oh, sorry. Uh, I've got to be going now. Excuse me. That was the best you'd come up with? Jeez. And what were you doing when that fancy dagger was being stolen then? Let me see. Hmm. I was sleeping in my hotel room. You don't sound too sure about that. I haven't been sleeping too well since I arrived in this country. I'm tired, so I'm not thinking too well. You're not sleeping well. Would you be having a guilty conscience then? I do not understand your meaning, Mr. O'Reilly. Perhaps it is the English. It is such a curious language, not as clear as the Egyptian. Well, you say the dagger is what brought you to this country. If I were in your position, I'd be tempted to steal it. Steal what has already been stolen? The dagger of Amon Ra belongs to the Egyptian people, Mr. O'Reilly. Not to Dr. Carter, not to this museum, and not to this country. I'd be watching what you're saying, Dr. Smith. You're digging your hole deeper with every word. Amon Ra will seek his own vengeance on those who have removed his dagger from Egypt. Amon Ra does not require my help. You say you were sleeping when it was stolen. Were you alone? That, sir, is none of your business. Ah, oh, that's where you're wrong, Dr. Smith. It is my business, as long as you're a suspect in the burglary. A suspect? Do you Americans have no shame? I'm here to gain the return of the dagger by legal means. Ask Dr. Carrington. <coughs> I have talked to Dr. Carrington, and I know he told you no dice. The matter is not settled until the last camel drinks from the water of the oasis. What's that? Some kind of Egyptian double talk? Excuse me, sir, but I see a turkey leg on the buffet table that requires my attention. Apparently not, because you're still here. You guys are going to talk? No. Alright. Moving on. I mean, yeah, everybody here is extremely suspicious. If you want to know my theory about it, I think it was stolen by an Egyptian. No offense to your people, Mr. Najir, but I think there is a secret sect of Egyptian sun worshippers who have sent an envoy here to steal the dagger. Countess, I hardly think that likely. Secret sects like you're describing haven't existed in hundreds of years. Oh, really? And what makes you such an authority on secret sects, Mr. Najir? Well, I am only expressing my opinion, madam. I'm certainly not an expert on the subject. Quite so. I think my theory is as good as anyone's, darling. And I heard it from a reliable source. Oh? Who was that? Never mind. Let's just say my source has never been wrong before. Hmm. There's always a first time for everything, Countess. I still find your theory far-fetched. Since you seem to be listening, Miss Bow, what do you think of my theory? What? Oh, I definitely think it's worth considering, Countess. There, you see, Mr. Najir. The press takes me seriously. Hmm. Of course, it is kind of far-fetched. Huh. Well, I never. Excuse me. Yeah, get out oh, of here, Miss Peacock. did I say something wrong? I'm sorry. So that's the deal, Countess. 
I'd rather not talk about it right now. Yeah, no kidding. The walls got ears around here. And so does certain nosy reporters, if you know what I mean. Yes. Now, if you'll excuse me, I simply must speak to Dr. Carrington. Sure thing, toots. Okay, so those two are up to something. Let's go see what's over here. This music's starting to get annoying. Oh god, he's gonna be hitting on her so hard. This is gonna be terrible. Mm, well, oh. ain't you the hoity-toity dame these days? <laughs> I almost didn't recognize you with your clothes on. <laughs> what? Excusez-moi, am I knowing you, so? Ziggy's my moniker. You gonna pretend you doesn't know me? <laughs> Ah, uh, you are making the joke with me, no? Perhaps you have confused me with someone else? I ain't joking! You're a bad telecra! <laughs> I, I, I know that body of yours anywhere! I am sure I am Lovely. not knowing what you mean, Monsieur Ziggy. Oh, I get it. Yous is worried one of these hi hats is gonna hear us, right? Oh, okay. I'm clued in. We can talk later. Okay, so this woman seems like she is getting along with every guy here fairly well. Are you enjoying the culinary delights this evening, Miss Delacroix? This food, it is adequate. I do not eat so much. This way I maintain my figure, no? Ah, yes. Uh, and a lovely figure it is, Miss Delacroix. Merci, Dr. Carrington. You are so kind. I feel we've known each other long enough. Please call me Archibald. As you wish, Archibald. I am yours to command, as what? always. Miss Bow, is there something I can do for you? Oh no! I was just... admiring Miss Delacroix's dress. Merci, Miss Bow. And your gown, it is... a bit out of date, but... charming nonetheless. Thank you, I think. Well, if you ladies will excuse me, I must mingle with the guests. Okay, the way he was talking to her makes it sound like he has something on her. Yours to command as always. Well, well, look what the leprechaun's dragged in. Oh, hey, now watch what you calls me, alrighty. I don't know what that leprechaun thing is, but I don't like the sound of it. I'm sure you've been called worse things, smart guy. Only by low-class type poisons, O'Reilly. By the way, ain't you afraid of being seen with me? Cops talk to stoolies all the time, and I was wondering what you're doing here. I'm a big patron of the arts. That's the kind of high-class guy I am. You don't even know what the word patron means. I does too. Okay, what does patron mean? Um, hey, ain't that the countess I see over there? I need to talk to her. Alright, is that it for them? I guess so. I've lost count. We'll just keep going until something happens. Come on. If I click with the arrow, that means she should go. One thing I am admiring about the Egyptian man is the way he is treating his woman with the strong hand and the firm words. Well, that is the proper way, as our culture teacheth us. Which is not to say our culture is primitive by any means. Our civilization has evolved over thousands of years, so our methods are quite well thought out and practical. Mmm, and the Egyptian man, he is very skilled in the private matters as well, no? Well, speaking for myself, 
I feel it is my sacred duty to be knowledgeable in all matters that concern me. I've certainly had no complaints about my skills, Mrs. Delacroix. Ah, Miss Bow, I didn't see you standing there. Ahem. Well, I hear another turkey leg calling my name at the buffet table, so if you'll excuse me. The turkey leg, it sounds good to me also. I'll accompany you, Dr. Smith. Okay, that... That woman is either extremely loose or she's using, like, her looks to get information for something. You two gonna talk? Nah. This looks like a group. Ah, oh, the other lady's in this one. That's the first time she's been in this. Countess, they tell me you were married to the last museum president, no? Yes, darling, that's correct. Sterling Waldorf Carlton was such a charming man and so wealthy. My heart is just an empty void without him. Yes, Sterling was such a nice man. It's too bad that he's worm food now. Ew! I prefer to think that Sterling is still with me in spirit. Oh, I'm sure his body is crawling with maggots by now. But if his spirit is with you, let me know because I'd love to see it. It is hard to lose a loved one, no? I understand you were only married this short time, Countess. Yes! I had only two short but charming months of married life with Sterling before he died. And how long had you known this man before you were married? Oh, we met just one charming month before we decided to get married. Three months. It was love at first sight. Where did you meet him? Oh, I had only been in this country a few weeks when I met Sterling on an offshore casino ship. It's quite legal to drink and gamble there, you know, and all the right people attend. Sterling was so charming, he just swept me off my feet. This Sterling, he must have had the large broom. It's just a manner of speech, my dear. Sterling was a wealthy man. You must have inherited a nice fortune, Countess. The money doesn't matter, darling. Actually, there's an annoying problem with the estate right now. It seems Sterling was changing his will when he died to give me more money, perhaps. Anyway, I'm sure my attorney will take care of the problem. Mm. Too bad you can't dig him up to finish his new will. Yes, quite. That's suspicious. I'm betting he was removing her from the will. The archaeology, it is such a masculine profession. Breaking into the ancient tombs with your sledgehammer, thrusting your way into the treasure chambers, touching the gold artifacts, it is also stimulating, no? Oh, so much innuendo. Yes. Well, when you put it that way, I guess it is rather stimulating being the most important archaeologist of all time. And it is such a burden to bear this greatness, no? With such pressure to perform, you must be perfect all the time. Yes, you have a unique understanding of my problems, Yvette. Ah, your problems, they are obvious, no? Very kind of you to say that, but there are many who misinterpret my actions. They don't understand the pressure of having famous relatives in the same line of work and having to compare oneself to them all the time. Ah, but the Tutankhamun find, it is nothing when compared to your discovery, no? Correct. I didn't realize you knew so much about archaeology. I know many things, Dr. Carter. So I've heard. Maybe we should discuss archaeology sometime. I'd love to hear about the work you do, Dr. Carter. Perhaps later tonight? 
Will you be working late tonight? Oh, yes. I think everyone will be here tonight, no? There is much to be done to prepare for the opening of your exhibit tomorrow. I was planning a break for tea around 3 a.m. if you'd like to join me. It sounds wonderful. Perhaps you would uh, come by my office then? I'd be delighted. It is so gracious of you to take the time to speak with me. Nonsense. Think nothing of it. How will I ever repay you for this courtesy? God. I know how busy you are, Dr. Carter. Hmm. I'm sure we'll think of something. And call me Pippin. I'm convinced she's gathering information now. I told you to stop bothering me, you camel driver. Jeez. Dr. Carter, I will stop bothering you when the dagger is safely back in Cairo. I don't know if you've noticed, but the bloody dagger has been stolen from the bloody museum, you great twit. I see no reason to exchange epithets with you, Dr. Carter. I am aware of the burglary. I am also aware that no evidence was left behind, and the dagger case was not harmed. In fact, I think you removed the dagger from the exhibit. Me? Me? And what bloody reason Me? would I have to steal my own bloody dagger from my own bloody exhibit? Bloody. The dagger is not yours, Doctor. It belongs to the Egyptian people. As to why you stole it, I do not pretend to understand your twisted American thinking. Perhaps you wanted to keep the dagger for yourself, in your own private collection. Perhaps I should ask why you're shifting the blame onto me, you insignificant peasant. It would be very clever of you to steal the dagger, then stay about to start rumors about someone else stealing it. Only an archaeological thief would make such an accusation, Doctor. Now I'm sure that you stole it for yourself. I did not. Yes, you did. Oh, God. Did not. Did. Did not. Did. Kids, kids, come on. Gentlemen, please. Who asked you? Mind your own business, you nosy reporter. But I... Uh... I have more important things to do. Our discussion is far from over, Dr. Carter. That's what you think, you malodorous buffoon. Jeez. Here we go again. You are interested in the great art, no? Then you should come with me this evening. I'll give you the personal tour of the old master's gallery. Well, uh, I... When did Deep Voice get I guarantee her? that you will not be wasting your time. You will enjoy it very much. Well, I... You are studying the art at the Université, no? Well, yes, but... Then it is settled. I will give you the private tour in a little while, no? But I... There is no need to thank me yet. I will be enjoying it as much as you will. Uh... Oh, crap, lady. Jeez. So what's he doing anyway here anyway? He's a dock worker. How'd he even get in this? Oh, maybe that was it. Let's go see the other way. Oh, hi. I guess I'm going to talk to you because I can't interact in any way. Miss Bo? Mr. Dorian? That's right. We met at the docks. Oh dear. Your shoes. 
They aren't exactly formal. Oh, well, I can explain that, but not right now. I see. Well, mm, what brings you here? You. What? Oh, me? You told me you'd be here tonight, and, well, I thought we should talk. Oh? About what? Um, could we step outside for a minute? The moonlight is very nice tonight. Oh, God. Well, all right. I think I'd enjoy that. I just wanted to explain to you what is with that who background? I really am. You're not Steve Dorian? Uh, well, yes, I am Steve Dorian, but I felt like I didn't give you the most accurate impression of myself when I met you earlier today. But, gee willikers, I'm just not used to meeting attractive young ladies on the docks. I wasn't down there looking for a man. I'm a professional journalist working on a story. Oh, well, yes, of course you are. I didn't mean to imply anything. In fact, I was very impressed with your professionalism and with your smile. Oh, God. I just didn't want you to think I'm a common stevedore. But you are. Well, I'll admit I was wondering what a stevedore was doing at this ritzy museum fundraiser. My stevedore job pays the bills. But I'm aiming for a career as an artist. However, I'm really here because... I'd hate myself for the rest of my life if I didn't try to see you again. Maybe I'm a fool, maybe you think we're too different. But I had to try. Well, I'm very flattered. Are you always this nervous? I'm not very good with women. I, I spent all my time working ever since I was ten years old, when my father died. I've never had a chance to date very much. Lately, I've spent my free time going to school. I'm starting to think we're more alike than I first thought. My mother died when I was very young, so I was raised by my father. What kind of an artist are you? I'm a painter, and I do a little sculpting. How interesting. But I think that an artist would know enough not to wear work boots with his tuxedo at a formal party. Oh, I said I'd explain that, didn't I? I was hoping nobody would notice. I had to blow two weeks' pay to rent this tux, but I didn't have enough left over to rent the fancy shoes. It's just that I had to see you again. You spent all your money just to see me? Oh, stop My that. goodness! I don't know what to say. Say you'll have dinner with me some evening. I, I may seem a little odd, but I promise that I'm harmless. I'd be honored to spend an evening with you and show you the sights around town. Well, I don't usually, but you've gone to a lot of trouble to find me. I think I can trust you. Uh, no. Really? You'll do it? Oh, thank you. You won't regret it. I'll make it a, a memorable evening. I'll paint for you, I'll dance for you, I'll, I'll sing for you, anything you want. Well, there's no need to get carried away. Let's see how dinner goes first. Of course, you're absolutely right. I, I don't seem too anxious, do I? Maybe just a bit, but that's okay. Okay, I'll take a deep breath and calm down. I'll be fine, I'll do whatever you want. I think this is the beginning of something important, Steve. Uh -huh. I like you already. Really? Well, that was fast. Let's go back to the party, Steve. I've got work to do.
he walks like a robot. Alright, I'm gonna save just in case here. Alright. See if there's anything over here. Something has to happen now, obviously. I've eavesdropped on everybody. Everybody's gone. Hmm. She's a man. She walks so slow. Speed. Let's see if that helps. Oh, yes, holy crap. <laughs> Alright, let's see if I can go in here yet. Zoom, zoom, zoom. Well, he ain't here. That's n That's n upon. Let's see if the dagger's still here. Oh, it's not that one. Upon close, that's n well, it doesn't look like that anything changed really, so we're probably not worth doing this. Yeah, I'm not gonna sit here and try to figure it out. It might be in there, it might be gone, I don't know. It's hard to tell. I couldn't tell which one I was looking at before, so. Well, there's only one place left to go. If that guy's here blocking me still. Nope. Alright. Let's go over here. Achtung! Terrorists are not allowed in this room at this time. You are disturbing the paintings. Raus! You leave now! Mark schnell! Jeez, oh man. That guy. Alright, let's go the other way then. Go. Hmm. A lot of dinosaurs in this museum. What's this? A sign on this dinosaur bone display says, please touch. Either these bones feel lonely, or the museum wants you to learn more about the bones by coming into close personal contact with them. No museum's gonna have a let's touch the bone thing. You pick it up and... <laughs> Whatever. Oh. What? Welcome to the Leindecker Museum Dinosaur Display. My name is Rex. And I'd like to tell you about myself. No, it's okay. Shut up. Alright, looks like it's all that's in here. Let's check out over here. Hmm. It looks remarkably like a glass case in the shape of a pyramid. A small card informs you that this case contained the famous Dagger of Amon-Ra, which is now missing. Hmm, so that's where it was. What's this? The placard says, this is a granite steel depicting Horus and Thoth. I don't care. Oh, what's this? Looks can be deceiving. You pick it up. Don't touch. Wait, is that blood? Look. Apparently the shoe's owner stepped in some of the blood. It apparently belongs to a dainty foot. Hmm. I'm gonna regret this. Oh, 
Hey, I found the dagger. <laughs> Dr. Carter seems to have suffered a severe trauma to his chest area. No, that, yeah, no kidding. A close look at the dagger reveals the words, Made in Pittsburgh, stamped it's on the part fake. of the blade that is not buried in Pippin Carter's chest. It's the to your naked daggers. eye, the rough surface of the dagger handle doesn't appear to hold any fingerprints. But that's something for the coroner to examine in detail. When you read... Oh, there's You pick there. it up and... There is nothing else in Pip... Although there are a couple... There are no... Or it could just mean that Dr. Carter was completely taken by surprise when someone assaulted him from the shadows. There is a wide cut in the shirt fabric, where the dagger sliced through to Pippin's chest. The cut is slightly wider than the width of the blade, as if it moved to one side after it penetrated his body. Lovely. From the smell of the damp stain, it appears that Dr. Carter was quite surprised by the stabbing. He peed himself. Okay. Eight fifteen. Hey, guess what I found? You scream like a banshee, lass. Did you kill the man then? What? No, I just walked in here and found him. I suppose that would explain your screaming then. Did you see the murderer? No. All right, I'll talk to you later after you've had a chance to calm down. Just don't try to leave the building. You are the worst cop ever. Act three. Ah, uh, now we're into this. Now the game started. We Excellent got a Excellent work. Your father would be proud of you. Having already interrogated the guests, Detective O'Reilly is now discussing the murder with the staff members as they leave the party. It would be best if you don't interfere. Oh, 10 p.m. What? Who's this? Hi, Ms. Bow. I'm Ernie Leach. Dr. Carrington told me you could stay a while and talk to the staff. I've got to lock the door, so just come and find me when you're ready to leave. Dr. C also has a key, but you don't want to bother him about that. Thank you, Mr. Leach. Just be careful where you go. Wolf will get upset if he finds you downstairs. See you later. Did you manage to learn anything from your interviews, Detective O'Reilly? Don't bother your little head about it, lass. It's my job, sir. This is an official murder investigation, Miss Bo. Do not be interfering. Miss Bo? Oh, I don't mean to interfere. I just want to know what's going on. Any leads so far? Dr. Carter died as the result of someone sticking a gift shop dagger in his chest. What more do you need to know? Well, for one thing, who did it? Someone who didn't like him, that's my guess. That's everybody. Brilliant deduction. If you think that you can do better... I can try. Oh, wunderbar. Now we've got the amateurs involved. I may not be a detective, but I'm terribly clever. I've solved murders before. Just stay out of me way, lass, and don't destroy the evidence. Certainly not. Huh. Yeah. Hmph. <laughs> All right. Let's see what we got from that guy here. A notepad made of good quality paper. 
is, it is blank? A notepad made of good quality paper. There's an imprint on the paper from the previous message written on the pad, but it's too faint to read. Unreadable words are imprinted on the paper. Mm. What did I pick up? A gold Egyptian Ankh medallion mm, with a bit of blood on it. That one guy had one, that. That's too obvious. Alright. I'm gonna end the stream right there. Uh, the game has picked up the first murder of... Well, the second murder of the game has happened. The first one, nobody really seems to know about yet. But, uh, I'll pick this up next time from here and see where it goes. Till then.